Hi everyone, this is Will with KL Aviation, and in this lesson we're going to look at the maximum elevation figure, or MEF, found on sectional aeronautical charts. Now the MEF is a minimum altitude that you can fly for a given quadrant and still clear all obstacles within that quadrant. The MEF is written in thousands and hundred of feet with a large number representing thousands and a small number representing hundreds. If the altitude is over 10,000, there will be two large numbers and one small number. To read the MEF, simply add two zeros to the end of the number, in this case 4,000. Now let's take a look at how MEFs are calculated. MEFs are calculated for each quadrant bounded by latitude and longitude lines on the sectional aeronautical chart. The calculation to come up with the MEF is different depending on whether it's a man-made or a natural obstacle. So first we're going to look at man-made obstacles. In this quadrangle, we can see that the maximum elevation figure is 2,600 feet. The first step to figuring out how the maximum elevation figure is calculated is to find the highest obstacle within this quadrant. The highest obstacle happens to be these towers down here at 2,463 feet. So we're going to take 2,463 as our starting point. This is an MSL value, so it'll be what you read right off your altimeter. Since this is a man-made obstacle, we're going to add 100 feet to the original elevation to get 2,563 feet. Next, we're going to round up to the nearest 100, which gives us 2,600 feet which matches the maximum elevation figure for this area. Now let's see what happens when we look at natural obstacles. I'm going to come south just a little bit here. And now we're going to look at this quadrant right here. Now this quadrant has nothing but natural obstacles in it, and we can see that the maximum elevation figure is 7,200 feet. Now we're going to start off the same way. We're going to find the highest elevation, which happens to be 6,850 feet. And we're going to start there. Now we're going to add 100 feet, just like before. Now this 100 feet that we added before and that we add here is just to account for any errors in measurement um, or with the man-made obstacles. If the uh, developer changed the plans just a little bit and didn't notify the FAA or anything like that where there's just a little bit of error in the original measurement. Now since this is a natural obstacle and we can't always predict what is going to be on a natural obstacle, we're going to add another 200 feet. This 200 feet accounts for vegetation growth as trees get taller or plants get taller on top of these natural features. It's going to account for any sort of towers or buildings that might have been put there after the FAA looked at it. Uh, certain items, unless they're uh, over 200 feet, the FAA doesn't really take a look at them in this case. And uh, definitely if something's not reported to the FAA, they don't know about it. So this 200 feet just takes into account anything that the FAA might not be aware of at that moment. So now we're left with 7,150 feet. We're going to round this up now to the nearest 100 foot as well, and we now end up with 7,200 feet, which is the MEF value for this quadrant. Now there are some instances that are very rare where you're going to add more than the 100 feet here. Those times are when the contour interval for that specific quadrant 
is greater than 200 feet. In that case, we're going to add half of the contour interval instead of the 100 feet. So if the contour interval happened to be 300 feet, we would be adding 150 instead of 100. Now this is calculated per quadrant and has nothing to do with the contour interval that you'll see on, on the chart legend. So just keep that in mind if you see a uh, maximum elevation figure in some extremely mountainous or extremely steep terrain that the maximum elevation figure is probably calculated to give you even greater margin of safety. Now MEFs are a strictly VFR number. They're not to be used for IFR planning. They could be used in an emergency situation when you need to know absolutely how low you could go to clear all of the obstacles within a given area, but they are strictly a VFR number. And keep in mind, if you're operating below the MEF value in an area in your VFR, it's very good to know exactly where that tallest obstacle is that the MEF was calculated for. Antennas are definitely a lot harder to see than mountain ridges. And if you don't know where that antenna is, or even where the guy wires that come off of that antenna are, then it's very difficult to pick them up in flight if you realize that you are underneath the MEF for that area. This concludes the lesson on maximum elevation figures. I hope you learned something, and I look forward to seeing you again in another KL Aviation.